The New Testament Church welcomes you to join us as Pastor Majid Saloum leads us in seeking a closer relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, changing us from glory to glory. And in the power of his might. Say that with me. Look at your neighbor and say, Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Look him in the eyeball. Say, Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That's not a suggestion. That's not a recommendation. That's what God told the Apostle Paul to tell us. To be that. He didn't say try to be that. He just said be. But when I read it, I had to find out, well, if you told me to be strong in the Lord, how can I be strong in the Lord? What does it take to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might? What does it mean to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might? Because I want to be exactly what God said for me to be. I want to have everything that God says that I can have. I want to do everything that God tells me to do, everything he has told me to do, everything that he says that I can do in the word. I want to be able to do it. Amen. Amen. What about you? I want everything that God has. I want it. Some of y'all might say, well, no, I just want to, you know, whatever, uh, you know, if it's possible. No, God has made promises. And he would not have given us promises if he didn't want to fulfill those promises. So when he gave us the promises, he obligated himself to fulfill the promises. But most people don't realize that the majority of the promises are conditional. And it takes faith to receive any blessing from God. Now, God may just, out of his love, his mercy, and his kindness, at times just do things for you because of that. But most of the time, it's going to take faith to do what God has called you to do and to receive what God has promised to you. Amen? Amen. So how many want to be strong in the Lord? This is a test. Some of y'all don't want to be strong in the Lord. That's okay. That's exactly what you would get. Uh, let me say it this way. I'm, I, if you want to be strong in the Lord and the powers might, raise your hand. Keep it up. Keep it up. I want to see if somebody don't raise their hand. <laughs> All right. Now I see. Okay. Some of y'all were just too lazy to raise your hand the first time. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, All right. Now let me say this. Being in the Lord is a present tense reality. It's not a future state of existence. Being in the Lord is a present tense reality. When you got saved, when you got born again, you were placed into the body of Christ. You were baptized into the body of Christ. I'm not talking about water baptism. I'm talking about you were baptized by the Holy Spirit into the body of Jesus Christ. And so you are therefore in Christ. The Bible says, therefore, if any man, woman, boy, or girl, therefore, if any man be where? In Christ. He's not going to be. He is a new creature, a new creation. The old things passed away, and behold, all things, what? Have become new. Praise the Lord. So you are in the Lord. So Paul says, and this is a different translation. He says, in conclusion, King James says, finally, in conclusion, brethren, be strong in the Lord. Okay? And in the power of his might. Now, the Amplify says, be empowered through your union with him. That's the key. To know and to understand, to know that you can be empowered by God, infused with his power, strengthened with his power, increased in strength, in might, by his power. You can be that. God wants you to know that. But another level of that is understanding that. So it's, 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 it's okay to just know it, but it's better to have a grasp, an understanding 
of what it really is. All right? So we want to go beyond just knowing some things. It's okay to know. And I covered this a little bit uh, last time. I don't want to go too far back because I don't have a lot of time. But wisdom is what? Somebody said knowledge. What is knowledge? Knowledge, we could say knowledge is information, facts. So we get knowledge through the preaching and the teaching of the word. So we have this knowledge. We have this information. We can say wisdom is the, the ability to take that knowledge, that, to take that knowledge, to take that information, and to uh, be able to apply it in our lives practically. But the Bible talks about understanding some things. And so I, I have skipped over that. God wants us to go from just knowing some things to understanding some things. And it's not a good example, but it's the best I can come up with right now. I know how to press the button on the remote control. And when I press that button, that red button, the TV comes on. But I don't have any idea. I don't understand how that works. The guy who understands that has a greater appreciation for that, and he probably can go fix it. All I can do is turn it on and try to fix it. I took apart my LCD TV because I wanted to fix something on it. It's not like the old days. <laughs> where you could take it apart, take a tube out, a resistor, or something like that. Uh-uh, nobody. And all I wanted to do was to fix the HDMI port. I couldn't even fix the HDMI port. But just opening the thing up and getting to it, I had to figure that out. And then to try to close it back up, it was worse <laughs> to try to get it closed. But I got it back together, and it still functions. But the HDMI port doesn't function because I couldn't change it. It was integrated into the board. I couldn't take it out. I, if I'd known that beforehand, I wouldn't even try to open the thing. What they got to do, be strong in the Lord, right? <laughs> so when we talk about understanding, we're talking about to be able to mentally comprehend and to set things in their proper place, in their proper order. So that's got what God wants us to do with all this preaching, all this teaching, all this information we get. We got to be able to understand it. Now, uh, let me jump ahead and, and start with where I left out. Go to Matthew chapter 13 right quick. I want to show you how important understanding is. And then we'll go on to some new stuff. What did I tell you to go? Matthew 13. <coughs> now this is the parable of the sower. The sower soweth the seed. The seed is the word of God. And Jesus told the disciples this parable. And then he went ahead to explain the parable to them. As a matter of fact, he said, if you can understand this parable, you can understand all of the parables. You can understand how the kingdom of God operates. You can understand how the kingdom of God functions if you can understand the parable of the sower sowing the word. Some of y'all get that later on. I don't have time to go into it. I just wanted to use this here. Verse 19, watch this. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and understands it not, then comes the wicked one, that's the devil, that's Satan, and then comes the wicked one and catches away, and the Bible says that the devil is what? The thief. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundant. How many of you want abundant life? Amen. He said, I, I've come that you might have life. Whatever is applicable to life, whatever has to do with life. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life. And he didn't stop. He said, more abundantly, more abundantly. God wants us to have an abundant life here on the earth, not when we get into heaven. God wants you to experience, let me say us. God wants us to experience heaven on earth. Amen. I thought I'd get more amens than that. Some of y'all don't want heaven on earth, huh? Some of y'all want to continue with barely get along. Some of y'all want to enjoy the temptations, the tests, and trials of life. Some of y'all want to spend your, 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 wallow around in sorrow and grief and trouble. I don't. There ain't going to be any in heaven. So if I, get, I guess if temptation, tests, and trials were really, really designed to perfect you, I guess we're going to have an abundance of them in heaven, huh?
I guess if temptations, tests, and trials, and sickness, and disease were uh, God's way of perfecting you and maturing you, No, God's way of perfecting and maturing you is by the word and the spirit. You can learn some things through temptation, test, and trial, but it's not the best teacher. I can learn from my nephews. Not when I'm in Gary, Indiana, and I see some kids in the street, turn around, go the other way. Don't open my mouth. Don't say anything. I don't have to go there and get shot at. <laughs> I know now. <laughs> don't do that. I knew that before, but I just said that. Some places you don't mess around. You don't, you know, you don't, you just need to be quiet. Turn around, go the other way. So what he said? Because they didn't understand the word of the kingdom, what? Satan was able to steal or to catch away, to take away that that they heard. So they did hear it with their ear. Jesus said, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear, right? So everybody can hear the words. Everybody that when you're in a, 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 a meeting like this, you hear, everybody hears the words that the, the minister is preaching or teaching. Everybody hears it with the ear, but many don't hear. They don't grasp, they don't understand what's being said, what's being taught. So they know the information mentally, but intimately they don't. And understanding implies a degree of intimacy where you spend time, I like to say invest time reading the word, invest time hearing the word, invest time meditating on the word. <coughs> Amen? So he says that the wicked one catches away that which was sown in his heart, he even reached their heart, but he was able to steal it, to take it away, wasn't he? This is he who receives seed by the wayside. I'm not going to read the other ones. I don't have time. Uh, I'm going to go down to verse 23, and this will make the point I want to make. But he that receives seed into the good ground, and that would be the heart, right? Into the good ground is he that hears the word and what? Understands it. Hears the word and understands it. Hears the word and understands. You got to not only hear the word, but you got to come to a place to where you understand the word. Amen? And understands it. Now, as a result of hearing the word and understanding the, the word, what is the outcome? What? Did I hear? Did somebody say it? Come on, don't be afraid. Fruit. Fruitfulness. What? Watch this. Here's the word and understands it, which also what? Bears fruit. And that's, don't you want to be fruitful in your life? Don't you want to bear fruit? We're not just talking about money here. We're talking about uh, fruitfulness in your life. Fruitfulness could be winning others to the Lord. How many of us are fruitful in that area? Don't raise your hand. Just think about it. <laughs> Say to yourself, am I fruitful in the area of winning people to Christ, as we refer to soul winners? Do I, do, have I been fruitful in that area? If not, why not? You've been saved five years, two years, five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. Have you ever led someone to the Lord one-on-one? -on -one? If not, why not? I would question myself. The Bible says examine yourself whether you be in the faith or not. Why aren't you winning? Why aren't, let me say this, let's put us all in the same boat. Why aren't we winning people to the Lord? Why aren't we winning people to the Lord? Why aren't we soul winners? That's a degree, that's some fruitfulness, right? Maybe we know that it's supposed to, all of us know that we should tell people about the Lord, that we should witness to people, but maybe we don't understand the importance. Maybe we don't have a, haven't comprehend the importance of leading someone to Christ. It's the greatest thing you could ever do. 
besides being saved. It's such a joyful experience to lead someone to the Lord. It's almost like being, I don't know, it's my, I just think I use myself again. My first time, it was almost like being saved over again. It was almost like being filled with the Holy Spirit. I was so excited, so glad. But then after a while, you kind of, oh, yeah, I'm guilty of it too. We let that desire, that zeal wear off. But here he says, because they heard the word and understood the word, what? Some brought forth what? Come on. What kind? How much? Some what? Yeah. So there were different levels or different degrees of fruitfulness. And those different degrees of fruitfulness based upon the fact of them hearing and how much they understood. So I say this, to, to the degree to which you understand any truth will determine the degree of your fruitfulness. I didn't like that. So, so I came up with another one. How much fruit you bear is determined on the level of your understanding. Can you agree with that? Does that make sense? Okay. All right, let me get back to where we were at. Okay, so talking about being strong in the Lord, you need to know about your union with the Lord. You have been joined to the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17 says, He that is joined, say joined. He that is joined, say joined. He that is joined, say joined. He that is joined to the Lord. He that is joined to the Lord is, say is. is. He that is joined to the Lord is what? Did Jim put it up there yet? 1 Corinthians 6, 17. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. Did you comp can you comprehend what that means? I don't know if I can get you as excited about that as I am ex excited about that. It says, he that is joined. The word uh, joined in the Greek means glued or stuck together. But that's not it. That's not the end of the verse. I thought it was the end of the verse. I'm joined to the Lord. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm joined to the Lord. No, there's an outcome. There's a result that takes place as, as a, a, because I'm joined, glued, stuck to the Lord, that something happened to me. If I close this, I hope that I can start it back up. Something happened to me. I wish these were different colors. Let's make it different colors. Something happened. Two things. Me, the Lord, because it's red. Joined to the Lord. Glued, stuck. Glued, stuck together. Right? But it says, he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. Something took place as a result of me being joined to the Lord. The Lord and I became one. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. So we see what? You in Christ, and we see Christ in you. You in Christ, Christ in you. You in Christ, say it. Say, me in Christ, Christ in me. Say it again. Me in Christ, Christ is in me. I am in Christ, Christ is in me. So we have become one. I am one with the Lord. God Almighty, you are one. You are hooked up, joined to, glued to. You have become one with God Almighty. The Bible says that we have become partakers of his divine nature. 
according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us unto glory and virtue. We have become partakers of his divine nature. His life is in you. His nature is in you. You are one with God Almighty. So you can be strong in the Lord. You've just got a desire to be strong in the Lord. You've got to have faith you got to understand and know that it's possible. God would never tell you to be something that you could never be. If you want to wallow around in sorrow and tears and, and grieve all your life and you want to enjoy the problems of life and you don't, want, you don't have a desire to be an overcomer, the Bible says that we are more than conquerors through him that loved us and gave himself for us. The Bible says this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even what? Our faith. If you want to be victorious, you're going to have to exercise your faith. You're going to have to put on the whole armor of God. The Bible says, having done all to stand, stand therefore. Having what? Test, test, test. Who, who knows? Ephesians chapter 6. We there. Want somebody to look. Having put on the whole armor of God, that you might be able to stand, and having done all to stand, stand therefore. Having what? Your loins girded about the truth. He said, put on the whole armor of God if you want to be able to stand. You got to put that armor on by faith. All of that armor comes by knowledge and information and understanding. Do you know what the helmet of salvation is? Is there a physical helmet that you can go put on? What is that? Do you know what it is? He said, put on. He said, put it And he never said, take it off. Put on the helmet of salvation. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Have your loins girt about with the truth. Put the preparation of the gospel of, of peace. Your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. What is that? I'm just giving you food to think about. If we don't know these things, why not? Shouldn't we know those things? He said, he said, put on the whole armor of God that we might be able to stand because there's an evil day that's going to come. He said, when the evil day comes, that you might be, but God doesn't want us to be overcome by the evil day. He didn't even send the evil day because he said, here's the armor, put it on so you'll be able to stand against the evil day and having done all to stand, you'll come out shining. God doesn't want you to fail just because temptation, tests, and trials come your way. That's not his way of perfecting you. He wants you to be victorious. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care if you got marital problems. I don't care if you got health problems. I don't care if you got financial problems. God's will, God's desire is for you to triumph over every situation, every circumstance. And if you don't have that kind of mentality, then you probably will fail. If you don't have that kind of mentality, you probably will die if you think God's trying to teach you something by cancer. You're trying to teach you something by this sickness, this disease. No! <laughs> ain't, you ain't learning nothing from that. Getting shot up with a bunch of medicine and chemo and radiation. You ain't learning nothing. Pain and suffering. Is that what you want to learn? No. And that may help, and you may, over, and you may overcome it, and you may get through it, and that's fine. I'm not knocking doctors, amen. My, my mama, my mama, when my mama was sick, we took her to the hospital, to the doctor. But we prayed, and we prayed, and we prayed, too, at the same time. So I'm not telling you, I'm not knocking doctors, but at some point, doctors may not be able to help you. Do you remember the story of the woman with the issue of blood? 12 years the Bible says she spent all that she had going to physicians and didn't get any better but rather grew worse but when she heard of Jesus she said to herself or within herself if I can just touch the hem of his garment I shall be made whole and she did exactly what she said. She left wherever she was, and she went to find Jesus, and she touched the hem of his garment, and he said, who touched me? Because he felt virtue, power, dunamis go out of him in through his clothing, 
and she was healed. And she wasn't, she wasn't going to say anything, but Jesus turned around and said, who touched me? And then she told him the whole story. That's how we got the story. She told the story to Jesus. She heard about it. So she exercised, and what did Jesus say to her? God Almighty made you whole. It's God's will. What did Jesus give credit to? Her faith. He said, daughter, your faith has made you whole. So it takes faith to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And I don't have time to look at Abraham. But, you know, Abraham and Sarah couldn't have children. Twenty, by about 25 years had passed, they still hadn't had children. 25, took 25 years before they had children. But during that time frame, Abraham stumbled around. He said, can I raise up seeds through Eleazar? God said, it's going to come through you and Sarah. Then, a, then Sarah got the bright idea, how about Hagar? Going to Hagar, and we can raise up seed through her. And they had Ishmael. But Abraham finally reached the point to where the Bible says he was fully persuaded. God knows where you are, and he will work with you. He will work with you. He will work with you to get you to the place to where you can be fully persuaded, get you to the place to where you can be strong in the Lord and in the powers of might. I'm not knocking you. I'm not minimizing if you're not where, where we're talking about right now. But if you don't know that there's a higher level, how will you ever strive to reach that? The Bible says God has given us apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, until we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Jesus Christ. God is, and that's not talking about in heaven, that's talking about here on the earth. He wants us to reach the full measure of the stature of Jesus Christ. In the, in the Greek, that means he wants us to be as big as Jesus, not when we get to heaven but here he it means a comrade a comrade of the same age and maturity so he said i want you to be like my son and we you are like him in your spirit but now you got to renew your mind romans chapter 12 said uh you got to have your mind renewed i beseech you brethren by the mercies of god that you what present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto god which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world but be what be transformed by the renewing of your mind you got to renew your mind and that's how the transformation is going to take place that's how christ in you the hope of glory is going to be manifested to other people you got to renew your mind and it takes the Word of God to renew your mind. It's going to take meditating in the Word. It's going to take studying the Word. And study doesn't mean just you just read a chapter. I mean, I'm not, not, I'm not knocking that. I'm just going to tell you what the Bible says. If you want to read a little verse a day, that's fine. If you want to read a chapter a day, that's fine. But the word study in the Greek means to show some zeal, some haste. Some of y'all were in college. Some of y'all probably went to nursing school. You had to burn the midnight oil to do some things, didn't you? It means, it literally means to exhaust oneself in any endeavor. How many times have you exhausted yourself in the study of God's word? That's an investment. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. We're going to stop there. Thank you for watching this edition of Glory to Glory. We would appreciate your prayerful support of our ministry. You're welcome to join us at the New Testament Church, 6772 Lamphere Road in Rome, Fridays at 7.30 and Sunday mornings at 9 and 10.30. From the New Testament Church and Pastor Majid Saloon, may the power and blessings of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you.